And then there were two. But this is the final edition for the season for the drop. Greg Wyshynski, Ardo Ocal getting you set for the Stanley Cup final. Yes. Vegas Golden Knights, Florida Panthers. We're going to have our own prediction special on this show. But before we go anywhere, what is that? What is this? Well, Arda, why don't you kachuk around and find out what this is, my friend, <laughs> as the whole Eastern Conference is done. Buddy, this is from Breaking Tea. They make really good stuff. Yes. They, they sent me this. I appreciate it. And it's been a heck of a run for Matthew Kachuk, hasn't it? It certainly has. We're going to break that down as well. Uh, I'm wearing a Mighty Duck shirt because that's the latest E60 on June 11th. You can watch that on ESPN. But what we're talking about right now are the Stanley Cup Finals. And look at this final wish as before we, we go anywhere, where as we all predicted, Edmonton Oilers making the Stanley Cup final, that disintegrated very quickly. But like, what do you think of when you see this? Here's what I think of. I think of two teams that haven't won before. And how exciting is that? Someone is going to break their maiden in the Stanley Cup final, capture their first cup. Oh, and both sides have very good stories. The Panthers, if they win the cup, will have completed one of the most dramatic Stanley Cup journeys we have ever seen. Yeah. Knocking off the Bruins. The sixth longest game in NHL history against the Carolina Hurricanes. Vegas, meanwhile, look, there's something inherently evil about some of the things they have done to beloved players through the years. Marc-Andre Fleury, sword through the back, right? But that being said, to go from expansion team to Stanley Cup in six years, as their owner Bill Foley had predicted in their first season, and by the way, getting our dear sweet Jack Eichel, American hero, a Stanley Cup after everything that went down in Buffalo, there are some good reasons for the Knights to win as well. Two American heroes, and they both led their teams in regular season scoring the first time in NHL history that's ever happened. Matthew Kachuk, Jack Eichel. There should be a lot of quotes in this series, too. That's what I'm looking forward <laughs> yeah. to. Between the coaches and the stars on the teams, yep. this is going to be fun. It really is. It's going to be a great final. I think it's going to be super competitive. And, uh, and we're in for a treat. So we'll get to our predictions in just a second. But we decided that we would dedicate this episode of The Drop, our season finale, to being a prediction show. Yeah. But not just any prediction show. Sure, we'll talk about the X's and O's. Sure, we'll talk about the product and the games on the ice. But there's really only one scientific way <laughs> to predict the Stanley Cup final. And that is with a multitude, multitude. of games and proper science facts predictions. So that's exactly what we're going to do here on the drop. And we're going to start with game number one, a way that we really should be doing every year, but we're going to institute it here on the drop. Let's go to the tarot cards. And joining us on this journey is special guest. You've seen him on Fitz and Harry. He's Grammy nominated. He's our friend and yours, Jason Fitz. Tarot cards, game one. My name is Madam Tara. What is your name? I'm Ardo. Very nice to meet you. Sir Ardo. I'm Jason. Sir Jason, nice to meet you both. What enlightenment can I bring you both to them? Oh, well, fit. Sir Jason and Thank I. Thank you, Sir Jason. Right. We would like to predict the winner of the 2023 Stanley Cup final between the Florida Panthers and the Vegas Golden Knights. With absolutely no bias, of course. Who would like to shuffle the deck? Awesome. Uh, Vegas. I mean, Vegas means shuffle, right? Then. You better be good then. I mean, if you're going to be Vegas, shuffle. Well, that's not bad, actually. Oh, oh man, I had, I had it. 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 Both my parents were at the casinos. I'm embarrassing the whole family right now. Is this past, present, and future? Yes. Is that how it goes? Yes, past, okay. present, future. So your past card and your past placement. So they must have had a very good I mean, season, this makes, past. This makes sense. It makes a lot of sense for the Golden Knights. Prosperous it's beginnings. Made, yeah, made the Stanley Cup final in the first year. <sighs> Felt good, and won game one. Like, so, you know, I feel, I feel like this is a good start, good start, okay. So the next card's your present placement, and this is the Eight of Swords. You have obstacles surrounded on all sides. You feel trapped and powerless. Wow. Doesn't sound too good for the Vegas sound, Golden Knights. That doesn't sound good at all for the present. So this is your future placement, the Five of Cups. It's a darker card. It means grief and disappointment. Ooh! Does it now? Does it now? Grief, grief and disappointment. I mean, there's five cups. This all of my the cups be... are empty because yeah. there's no... Oh. And, and look at the sadness of the horse here. This, this horse could be an indication of what Golden Knights fans look like at the end of the series, huh? Based on this card. I don't feel good about this exercise at all. Wow. Well, that's the Golden Knights past, present, and future. Seems pretty accurate to me, Madame Tara Taro. Uh, how about the Florida Panthers? Very well. Let's take a look. 
All right, let's see what the Panthers have in their future. Let's see those bad cards. Past, present, and future. Your cards have more color than mine. Yeah, like, yours seem bright and happy. In particular, the future okay. card has a lot of colors going okay. for it. It's fun. It's fun. So what are we seeing here? The pass card is the chariot card. It's a major card in the deck. When you have felt the bliss of achievement, you're riding on the chariot's back. And that is in your past place. Well, how Maybe about 1996? That? Is that what we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna call back 1996 yeah. to the chariot? That's a long time ago, and honestly, maybe the blessing happened like very late in the season because it wasn't that far from the end of the regular season that the Panthers were out of playoff position. So maybe this card is significant for at least the recent past of the Florida Panthers. So I like it. I like okay. it. Okay. Good card. Good card. What about the present? Your present card is the Two of Wands, and it means determination and direction. So. The direction you are looking to go to reap success is you are very much on your way to that. Oh yeah, determination in each playoff series that they've played, coming back in games, winning one goal games, especially in the conference final. What does the future say? Sir Jason's future with the Golden Knights didn't sound so good, but like, what I about... Had, I had a sad horse, you've got a dreamy model horse. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Go ahead, what do we do? What is this? So your future is the Four of Wands, which means completion and celebration. So in short, it's time to party. What? Completion and celebration, my friend. Completion and celebration. Celebration like this, too. Madam Tara reading tarot cards. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take this as gospel, as completely accurate. Right. And we let's, thank let's you. Leave. We let's thank leave. you for your time. Should we pay? You're, you're paying. It's on you, right? You're, just, you're paying. Well, I got, I got a call. You can Venmo. Always lose. You're a loser and you gotta pay. Incredible, so, <laughs> incredible stuff, incredible stuff. I, I think we have a new playoff slogan. Florida Panthers colon completion and celebration. That's right, that's right. <laughs> By the way, this is going to be a seven-game series uh, for predictions. So Florida is up one nothing an hour drop prediction special. Hmm. But we're going to sprinkle in some analysis, of course, uh, as we talk about the Stanley Cup final. And we should start with Matthew Kachuk and we the should. Florida Panthers. Yeah. Matthew Kachuk has been a revelation. Uh, a lot of people liked him going into the playoffs. So he's no secret or anything like that, but he's been fantastic. Yeah. What is... What has been his key to success? His key to success is the swagger, man. I mean, he, he infused this team with so much personality. I still remember asking about the Chuck before the Boston series, hey, what do you think? And him saying, we'll have to play perfect hockey to even win a game against these guys. He is the embodiment of the underdog spirit that pervaded this team. And on top of that, he keeps scoring these incredibly big goals. Three overtime goals plus the series ender against the Carolina Hurricanes. Think of how good Bobrovsky's been. Think about the fact that Kachuk right now is maybe, even with him, or a little bit ahead for MVP. He has been a guy who's gone from superstar to crossover megastar. Dude, pregame shows with Charles Barkley, feature stories in People Magazine. Kids on another level right now. Yeah, absolutely. He's the superstar that the NHL loves to see and hockey fans love to root for, quite honestly. And yeah. he's been a quote machine this entire postseason. Oh, yeah. And honestly, like even Paul Maurice said it, right? He's like, when I was when I was coaching uh, Winnipeg and he was on Calgary, I used to have nightmares about this guy. I hated this guy, especially how he played around the net. Now he gets to benefit from it. And he scored so many great goals in front of it. Like he's one of the most calm and interesting players in front of the net we've ever seen. And by the way, one of the greatest goal celebrations we've ever seen in the, in the playoffs twice. Yeah. With the with the go grab the bus. We're, we're walking off bus the ice ten. right now. Bus and ten celebration. It was one of the greatest things ever. Look, he, he to, to have somebody. This is why you have the playoffs, folks. You have the playoffs to find new stars to give the platform to players like Matthew Kachuk. Next season, when the Florida Panthers play, and when by the way they'll play a lot on your national television, I bet. You're going to find them out and seek them out because you want to see what Matthew Kachuk does. He is the 40th Hearth Trophy finalist to make the cup final in the same year, but he could be the third to switch teams in the offseason if he wins the con Smythe. Wow. That's Glenn Hall, that's Ryan O'Reilly, and it could be Matthew Kachuk. And, and as you said, he's in the lead right now yeah. uh, in terms of uh, the odds. Just by a bit. We'll by talk a about hair, that in a, in a but few, still, but we'll, just by a bit. We will. Now, we have game two. Game one went to Florida. That was the tarot cards. Game two, Jason Fitz returns, and uh, we hit the links. Check it out. Oh. The series is at one nothing. The tarot card said Florida Panthers. Game number two in our prediction series 
Fun fact, we have a putting green on ESPN campus, so we're gonna go golfing. Fun fact, I am Marsha so good at putting. See what I did there? I already don't wanna be here. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, that's what I've been missing. Typically the team that's better at golf, usually not the one that wins the <laughs> cup, but here we are folks, 1-1 right now in our competition. You're right, I did grow up a Leafs fan, so that doesn't make sense, <laughs> does it? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm just kidding everyone. Uh, so the Vegas Golden Knights, let's shift focus yeah. to them right now. An embarrassment of riches. You right. mentioned it. Stanley Cup Final Year 1. Stanley Cup Final Year 6, where they are right now. They've missed the playoffs once. They've made the conference final in the postseason four times. Obviously, the expansion draft, and, and, and you mentioned a few trades, etc. Yeah. But this season, what has been their key to success? I think the key to success is the, the foundation they've built, to be honest with you. I, t I asked Jonathan Marchiso about that during the conference final in Dallas. Like, what is it about this team that keeps them successful? And he said, look, it's that foundation of five or six guys from the quote-unquote golden misfit year of the expansion team back in 17-18 that have kind of like created the culture. And then all the players that have come in afterwards, whether it's Jack Eichel as we see here, whether it's Petroangelo, Barbashev, all these guys that have come in afterwards, they have come into a culture that already exists there. Now look, we just saw Bruce Cassidy. That's another big thing for this team. This team got better defensively with Cassidy behind the bench. And how important, Arda, is that when you have five different goaltenders play for you in the regular season after Robin Lehner missed the year because of his offseason hip surgery? So all of that combined has made this Golden Knights team a viable contender for the Cup. And, you know, they've done it a little quietly. They haven't had the high spots as the Florida Panthers have in the other conference. Slow and steady has won the race. And they're a deep and dangerous team. We've hit our quota on pro wrestling references. So <laughs> good on that. But that's a really good point about goaltending, right? Yeah. Like, remember at the start of the season, we were talking about Logan Thompson being a yeah. possible Calder Trophy yeah. candidate early on. Right. If he were to lead this team. And then Laurent Brossois started the playoffs yep. for the Golden Knights. And now here's Aiden Hill yep. lighting it up. Yeah. And, the, and the, key other, the other key part of this, too, I think, Arda, is depth. Okay. I mean, right now, their leading scorer, William Carlson, he's on their third line. You know, they've got incredible, they have four lines rolling at the same time. They have the ability to roll out Alex Petrangelo or Shea Theodore for like over th two thirds of the game on defense. They're really deep. They're a good team. The Vegas Golden Knights can become the ninth team in NHL history to win the Stanley Cup without any finalist for a major individual regular season award. So no yeah. Hart Trophy finalists, no Calder, no uh, Vezina, et cetera. How to your point. It's almost as if there's East Coast bias for the awards. Oh, is that what you're attributing it to? <laughs> Whatever. I was going to say depth. Oh, attributing I was just to say depth. I'm part of the East Coast bias. <laughs> I am a member of the East Coast elite media that keeps putting <laughs> Eastern Conference players up for all these awards, baby. Because you love the East Coast. Let's what? go. Patrice Bergeron won a face-off. He wins the Selkie. That's it. Just one face-off. He back-checked that one shift. Selkie. Let's go. Uh, let's move on to our Game 3 predictions. So we are tied at one in the series right now. Okay, one more pro wrestling reference. Spin the wheel. Make the deal. Ooh. Game number three. Series tied at one. The way we're going to do it right now, the wheel of predictions. We got the Florida Panthers, we got the Vegas Golden Knights. We also have the Boston Bruins, if you believe that they are the rightful winners and they should have won and they got robbed after the greatest regular season of all time. We also have the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you're one of those hockey fans that asked the question, but what does this have to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs? Of course, like any game show wheel, we have Bankrupt. <laughs> and of course, everyone gets a participation trophy and the Stanley Cup Final ends up in a tie. The Florida Panthers are going to win Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Final. They're a team built for the postseason. They've got everything you need for a win, and they're going to take Game 3. 
Is my mouth that big? <laughs> What what I, I what just happened? Look, what was that? What is this? Look at this maw. Thanks you know, for the nightmares, man. Do you know how much Taco Bell can be shoveled into that maw? Uh, a lot. Let me tell you. The entire Crunchwrap Supreme. In one bite. In one fell swoop. That is horrendous. I know. Scary. A little scary. You know what's not horrendous? Goaltending. Aiden Hill on one side, Sergei Bobrovsky on the other side. And like ought. <laughs> Don't do that. Again. Don't ever do that. I don't know if you caught that, but he did. yeah. Anyway, no, no Pac-Man on this side of the table. Uh, both goaltenders have been amazing. Yeah. This is actually uh, very few instances where both goaltenders did not start the postseason for their teams. Right. It was it, it was uh, Alex, Alex Lyon, Lyon and yeah. Laurent Brossois. Yep. And now we have these two goaltenders who are absolutely lighting it up. Is there any edge here? Yeah, the edge is to the Panthers, man. They got Sergei Bobrovsky. What are we talking about? Playoff Bob. Playoff Bob finally earning that money, baby. And he's been great. They didn't really need him to be all that perfect against the Bruins, although, listen, he played a huge role in that upset. Uh, but against the Leafs, they got goalied in games one and two, and that totally led to them winning that series in five. In Carolina, I mean, he was awesome. He was really, really good in that series, including that aforementioned four overtime game, six longest in NHL history. Um, He's been great, and, and he's been everything they need, and he's been an active reason why they've won. But you look on the other side of the equation, I, I saw Aiden Hill come into that, that uh, Edmonton Oilers series, and I said to myself, Self, this is a guy who they're going to say, just don't blow it for us, Aiden Hill. But the thing about Aiden Hill that's interesting is he's played well better than that. He has been an active reason why the Golden Knights are playing for the Stanley Cup. He's been sneaky good. His numbers since coming into the playoffs are better than Bobrovsky's. That's what I that. meant. Yeah. Yes. So That's uh, why and, I asked the question. Is there a chance that Aiden Hill, a career backup for tandem goalie, turns into a pumpkin in the Stanley Cup final? There's always a chance of that happening. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's pretty good. And don't forget, too, they're really good in, uh, in front of him. The Vegas Golden Knights, big physical team. They limit the other team's high danger chances. They clean out the slot. They do a very good job. Dallas saw that firsthand. So even if Aiden Hill isn't at his best, I think the team in front of him is the better defensive team in the series. I know you and I have spoken about this off camera, and it's a really good point that you made. If Bobrovsky wins the Stanley Cup here, what does that do for his career and how we view it and, and, and possibly yeah. being, you know, somewhere on a wall in Toronto? No, oh, he's he's a hockey hall. If 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 Sergey Bobrovsky wins this Stanley Cup and is a primary reason why and ends up winning the Conn Smythe for MVP to go along with two Vezinas, to go along with his regular season numbers, it's Hall of Fame numbers. I mean, this, this not, not to put too fine a point on it, Arda, this could be the difference between Sergei Bobrovsky making or missing the Hall of Fame winning the Stanley Cup for the Panthers. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I don't even think Conn Smythe is necessary. He's been fantastic yeah. through the final. Even if he has an average final, I think he's done enough to say he's a big reason why this team if wins they the win Stanley the Cup. Cup. If yeah. they win the Cup, yeah. yeah. Time for game number four. Let's check it out. All right, Fitz, the series is at 2-1 right now. So far, we've done tarot card reading, we've spun the wheel, we've putted, but now, instead of a coin flip, good old-fashioned flip. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. We've got one logo on each side of it. Golden Knights, Florida Panthers. All right. Simple as that. How do you want to do it? You just want to go over there. Wow, the Knights! All right, we're tied at two in That's the series. Awesome. That's awesome. How about that? Uh, thank you to Jason Fitz for joining us on the show. He is at the game, yep. actually, uh, Fitz and Harry, ESPN Radio, and also it happens to be his birthday. Yeah. So, buddy, happy 52nd birthday to you, my friend. It's, I hope you celebrate. It's just Sincere. wonderful to know that we have an endless supply of guys with dark hair and hairspray that we can call upon. <laughs> 
<laughs> if I'm on the road. <laughs> yes, exactly. He could be your stunt double. Maybe in a Guardians of the Galaxy it's, commercial. This is the know. best. I'm so happy he was able yeah, yeah. to do it. He's a true Knights fan, and it's great to see him. A lot of Vegas Golden Knights fans are saying Jack Eichel is the best. He's had a terrific campaign. He led the team in regular season scoring. He didn't play the whole season, obviously, and here he is lighting it up in the playoffs as well. What have you noticed from Eichel in this postseason? Well, the thing about Eichel that I really like is that he's a cog in the machine. I, I, you know, when he was in Buffalo, there was such an enormous amount of pressure on this guy to be the franchise player. You know, second overall pick, that whole thing. In Vegas, he is an essential part of their mix. Don't get me wrong. He's their leading scorer right now. He's the top line with Barbashev, Eichel, and Marcia so is one of the best lines in the playoffs. But he's not. it's not as if it's Jack Eichel and the Golden Knights. And I think that's been really, really important for him at this stage in his career. Um, but he's been great. I mean, you know, great setup man, like I said, uh, an integral part of their offense and, uh, and playing some of the best hockey of his career. And uh, the other thing, too, Artip, I think it's been revelatory, his 200-foot game. You know, yeah. I think a lot of yeah. people knew Jack Eichel as a scoring center, uh, but they may not understand how good he is defensively. And I think he's opened up a lot of eyes in the postseason, how good he is in all facets of the game. And that goes back to your the cog in the wheel, right? Like just buying yeah. into the system and buying into what Bruce Cassidy is saying, yep. the coach saying, listen, this is what we want from you and this is what we want you to work on and improve. But how many of our Buffalo Sabres friends must be thinking, my God, just let the guy have the surgery. Let the guy have Doing the surgery. He can still be right here. Right yeah, honestly, though, maybe not in a few years. Because I still think the Sabres are going to be a team to contend for a while. Because they have a lot of great pieces. Oh, yeah. Including the ones they got from Vegas. So, oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe short-term pain, long-term gain for the Buffalo Sabres. But, and, yes, if, and, you're, if you're Jack yeah. Eichel, like, this is a... And, by the way, it's his first postseason. Right. Ever. Ever. And it, and it could also be a situation of it never having happened in Buffalo for him, regardless how many Sure, of course. Too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, game five of our prediction... Uh, is going to be a lot of fun. I bet you didn't think. Th I bet you didn't even know that this existed. I certainly did it until I saw it on eBay. So here it is. That's not fair. I mean, who knew that Jack Campbell was on the right? That's, <laughs> that's really not fair. Come on. How dare you besmirch Soupy? I didn't even know this. Like, look at this thing. It's amazing. It's I really love it. cool. It's very ESPN cool. ESPN branded. There you go. That. So we've been talking about a lot of stars and favorites, quite frankly, for the Conn Smythe, which is, of course, the playoff MVP trophy. Mm -hmm. Names like Kachuk and Eichel, Aiden Hill, Sergei Bobrovsky, there's a bunch. But if you were to pick a dark horse, yeah. someone you believe that is certainly in contention in the running, there are the odds right there, you mm -hmm. can see them. Who would you select as your dark horse going in? Well, it's a big fat plus 500 right now, but it would, it would be Jonathan Marcheseau for a couple reasons. First off, one point behind Eichel for the lead, the lead in points, one, point, uh, one goal behind William Carlson for the lead in goals. But he's got two other things going for him that I think are really interesting. And you have to remember, it's the Professional Hockey Raiders Association voting for this award. I'm a member of it. I know how we think. We like a good story. Here's a story for you. An original golden misfit from the expansion team leads his team to the Stanley Cup. Oh, and by the way, how did he end up on Vegas? Well, let me tell you how. The Florida Panthers tossed them aside like trash. And he ended up in Vegas. And so you've got the stat story, you've got the gold misfit angle, and you've got the revenge angle, Arda, for Jonathan Marcheseau. Yeah, Jonathan Marcheseau has a lot. William Carlson also uh, is a good one. Yeah. Uh, on the side. But he wasn't tossed aside by Florida. No, he wasn't tossed aside by... I, I get it. For he your narrative, I'm just saying also, yeah. also happens to be on the graphic yeah. there. Okay, that's right. why I wanted to mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, he's a good choice. I like, I like your narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, may... I don't know where the East Coast bias part. Maybe the fact that he left the East Coast. He was in the he was in yeah, the Eastern okay. Conference, and then he yeah. Uh, for the I, I guess I'll be the East Coast bias. I'm going to pick Carter Verhage. Okay. Uh, he's been clutch in many games, especially Boston. Those three games where they were facing elimination, yep. he had six points, and he's been he's gotten two points 
in series clinching games in rounds two and three against Toronto, against Carolina. He's shown up and showed out for the Florida Panthers when it has counted the most. Now, he's had a relatively quite at four points in four games against the Carolina Hurricanes. But if he has a strong final, I still believe that he could be somebody that you could point at and say, you know what? So He'd be a good pick. I, I, I think there's a version of this series in the multiverse where Kachuk is held in check. Mm-hmm. Like Kachuk disappoints, but he's going to be targeted, right? Like he, like part of the game right. plan has to be hey, we got to shut down. Well, I mean, Kachuk, look, especially in front well, of the net. Well, again, we have we have Will. Let's talk about William Carlson for a second. I'm okay. a Marcia so guy, but I think Carlson is dark horse too because you have to remember the narrative for Carlson is that he has a ton of goals, but he also did really well to shut down Leon Drysaddle and Connor McDavid in the right. second round. So right. he has that on his resume. So if they deploy Carlson out there against Kachuk. And now all of a sudden, Kachuk's offense goes, and all of a sudden, Verhage's offense goes, then all of a they sudden, didn't you didn't might... see that. You may want to do that. Well, no, it, it, they understand the noises. The noises it, yeah. are inherent that one goes up and one goes down. Got it. Okay. My point being is that if Verhage has a very strong <laughs> final offensively, yes. it's yes. probably still Bob, but it could be him if it's like a few game winners. Okay, you, okay, so you obviously you vote on this trophy, okay? Yeah. And you know how the voters think. I so do. I have a question for you. Yeah. How much weight is put on the final versus the rest of the rounds? Well, the Conn Smythe is special in the sense that it is for the totality of the playoffs. Correct. But you can't divorce recency bias from all of it, right? Um, so there will be some weight given to it. Look, it's extra- extraordinarily close right now. I mean, I can't remember the last time where we had two players on the same team in, in Kachuk and Bobrovsky that both have as strong of a case as this and, like, three or four players on the other team that have as strong a case as Eichel, Marcheseau, Carlson, and Aiden Hill. Don't forget, if Aiden, Aiden Hill pitched two shutouts in the conference final. It's amazing. If this guy pitches another two shutouts in the Stanley Cup final, all of a sudden we're talking about him. And I wonder, I mean, maybe the, the depth is too much, but he could win the Conn Smythe in a loss if he has a, stands on his nah, own. Nah, dang. There's too, many, there's too many people you on need, the Panthers you, side. You need two things for a guy to win the MVP in a okay. loss. You need that guy to have dragged his team all the way through the playoffs. Yeah, that didn't happen. And, and, and there's no other option on his team like Jaguar did in 2003. I was just going to do that. Shout right? out to Jean-Sebastien Shout out to J.F. Jaguar, Jiggy Puff Marshmallow goalie. Uh, but then... On <laughs> You're the, happy because the Devils beat him. But anyway. On the other side, you have to have absolutely no candidate. Yeah. And, and I think for the You're Golden right. Knights yes. right now, we have a few candidates. You're absolutely right. Game number six. Will it be over in our prediction game or will we go to a game seven? For this game... We go to one of our esteemed producers, Shelby Lacey. Her dog, Cassius, is going to help us predict this particular challenge. Let's take a look. It's an underdog, you see, the Panthers. The Panthers are the underdog. The ball was under the dog. The dog picked up the ball. The underdog wins the game. It all makes sense if you think about it, Arda. We should have seen it coming. I can't believe this. Sorry. This is on the last show of the season. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Our prediction machine has gone seven games, people. What a shock. Despite the fact that I mentioned it at the top of the program. Yeah, we filmed seven elements, too. Oops. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our producers uh, for doing the first six. It's been a lot of fun, but we decided, you know what? We got to do this live. We do. We're do it live here on the drop. That's right. Predict the Stanley Cup champion. Who will it be? The Vegas Golden Knights or the Florida Panthers? Who will it be? What we decided to do to set this up yeah. is we decided to go company wide and worldwide via social media mm-hmm. and ask predictions on who will win the Stanley Cup by anyone named Stanley. Right. Stanley, first name, Stanley, last name. If Stanley was still alive, we'd say, who wins the cup? And he'd be like, Excelsior, it's the Golden Knights. Great impression. Thank you. 
What we decided to do was we decided to take some of those predictions and put them into something very, very special. Some would say the only vessel appropriate to put such power into. Keep going. More. That was amazing. I can't believe we actually hired we actually hired John Williams to do the music for the drop. Can you believe it? It's unbelievable. We're gonna win an Oscar. I had no idea. It's amazing. So here it is. Thank you, Rachel, letting us borrow the Stanley Cup sponsorship here yet. So we're gonna take this off. Okay. Why don't you do the honors? Thank you, sir. All right, let's go here. And uh, let's see what we got here. And oh my god, Arda. Mm. Arda. It's the Maven let's Stan go. Fischler! A hopefully future Hockey Hall of Famer. And Stan says, Maven says Panthers in six. So there it is. Congratulations to the Florida Panthers. Stan the man. Stan Fischler says you are winning the Stanley Cup. That is game seven. This is our official prediction here on The Drop. And yes, Maven is a future Hall of Famer as far as we're concerned. And you are all Hall of Famers for following us here on The Drop all, all season year. long. You are you all too. friends and family here. here. We all over the place. Yes. Thank you to the crew for yes, putting up you. with meh, meh, and uh, And for all your hard work on this show. We'll see you guys next season. Enjoy the Stanley Cup Final. Mwah! Woo!